I'm David. I'm the magic man. He's the dream come true man. I know what I have to do. More. They'll kill us, you know that, right? They'll try. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, now you're listening. Well, listen to this. You want to eat something? Eat shit. Now go tell your friends it's not your time, it's mine. Go. Or I kill every one of you. 2017 was a good year for the superhero genre. It was the year that gave us Logan. DC came back into the box office game with Wonder Woman and MCU gave us Spider-Man Homecoming, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 and Thor Ragnarok. So who did it better? It was Legion of course. What makes Legion so special? Let's find out. Okay. Let's talk. Created by the iconic Noah Hawley, the same guy who created the Fargo TV show, Legion offers us a mind-bending peek into the world of superheroes, a genre which before 2017 was either too grim or too silly. It's basically a dream come true for fans of both comics and top-notch avant-garde filmmaking. The sort of magic you make if you merge Stanley Kubrick's wackiness with Christopher Nolan's exuberance. Even Nolan didn't really experiment with the Dark Knight trilogy too much. Legion certainly veered towards absurdity at times, but it's the good kind of absurd and urged the viewers to take a leap of faith just like David in the show. Fox must be applauded here to grant Mr. Holly the creative license to be limited only by his imagination and the result we got was something on the lines of the Tree of Life or Upstream Color. If you guys watched till the very end of the last episode, you must have seen the press button to play again sign which makes us rethink everything we have experienced over the course of 27 episodes. I am really tempted to call Legion the inception of superhero TV shows. Is, is this... Hmm? I'm insane, you idiot. This is my delusion. It's not real. As I have said before, Legion has never shied away from embracing the absurd. The first and most obvious one that comes to mind is Lenny's dance routine which was crazy and fun at the same time. Season 2 was even more bonkers and visually inventive at the same time. We had delusions hatching from eggs and the terribly creepy monks of the Migo order. Also who can forget Admiral Fukuyama with a basket on his head and the female robots with mustaches speaking for him. It's one of those things that doesn't really make any sense but you know it's the right decision to have them in the show. What does that mean? Women with mustaches? Singing? In episode 6 of season 2, the concept of the multiverse was explored. We got to see different versions of David from different timelines. This episode was inconsequential to the overall story but was still pretty engaging. Do you remember when Oliver trapped himself in an ice cube in the astral plane or when he defeated the wolf in a rap contest? Heck, we even got a freaking minotaur. Crazy but awesome. Excuse me, um, do you know where a girl could find a monastery? <laughs> cool. Thanks. Legion's marketing has always played up the show's 70s aesthetic, paying particular attention to the character's style of dress and the design of the sets, particularly the institution David called home at the beginning. The psychedelic aspects and the unique style explored in Legion made it one of the most visually captivating shows in terms of cinematography, the cinematic equivalent of hallucinating while being high on weed and LSD. The first sequence that comes to mind is the now famous Bolero fight in episode 7 of season 1 where it was imagined as a vintage silent film complete with title cards. Who can forget the Bollywood style dance number featuring David and Sid as the leads with a French song playing in the background? Also not many shows can use exposition to explain delusional paranoia as was done by Legion and that also with a voiceover from John Hamm. 
The mutant battle between the Shadow King and David in season 2 was epic as well and provided much needed relief to fans who had grown weary of CGI battles in the X-Men movie franchise. And episode 4 of season 3 which elaborates on the time monsters is one of the most original episodes in TV history, period. Wanna dance? Let's dance. Noah Hawley has taken a leaf out of Tarantino's playbook where he has imbued Legion with innumerable references to pop culture. The mental hospital where David is held at the beginning is called Clockwork Psychiatric Hospital which is clearly a reference to Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange and the treatment of David at the hospital is also sure to remind you of Alex from the same film. In season 1, the creator chose to depict the Shadow King in a way that was obviously a nod to Bob from David Lynch's Twin Peaks and the orange jumpsuits with the yellow stripe down the side or Amy Holler's outfit will definitely remind you of Wes Anderson's The Royal Tenenbaums. Fans who went into Legion thinking that there would be a traditional protagonist and antagonist like in most superhero shows were in for a pleasant surprise. David was meant to be a character plagued by mental illness and hence an unreliable narrator at best. Something we have previously seen in Mr. Robot and The Night Off. Even Amal Farooq, who everyone assumed was the big bad villain, turned out to be the guy advocating for peace in the end. X-Men comics and movies have never had a dearth of anti-heroes to be honest, but Legion takes the concept a notch higher and emphasizes that what really matters is perspective. Was I really this bitter? I felt with hate. How petty you seem. Here, let me show you what I have learned. Now, Lenny is what Harrison Wells is to The Flash basically the soul of the show. Is there anything Aubrey Plaza can't do from portraying the Shadow King in season 1 to being a victim imprisoned in Oliver's mind to getting resurrected in Amy's body with blue eyes? Lenny has done it all. In season 3, Lenny becomes even more engaging to watch as the breakfast queen in David's cult. Plaza brings the right kind of crazy into the role and her journey is ultimately one of the most heartbreaking in Legion. In my opinion, Aubrey Plaza was born to play Harley Quinn. Share this video with the hashtag Lenny if you guys feel the same. Her Majesty, the Breakfast Queen. <laughs> Sorry for the wait. Was it awful? Little birdies only get treats after they sing. Despite the reality altering and mind bending monikers that Legion has acquired over time, it has never shied away from taking on real world issues. The first season tackles issues like mental health persecution of minorities and fear of the other, while season 2 deals with how fake news and disinformation often leads to delusions even in the most logical of beings. It also features a nod to the Me Too movement in season 2's final episode, highlighting the need for a woman's consent. You drugged me and had sex with me. With the Charles Mansion-like cult, season 3 ultimately underscores the message that absolute power corrupts and peace, not war, is the only way to resolve conflict. What's happening, Daddy? Where'd all the children go? Get everyone together. Leave Daddy alone. And finally, Legion is a music lover's paradise. The showrunner uses songs like Something For Your Mind by Super Organism, First Wave Intact by Secret Machines, Happy Jack by The Who, What by Captain Sensible, and many more. The show is also replete with covers of iconic songs like Behind Blue Eyes by The Who, can get there from here by R.E.M. and Tori Amos's Conflict Girl. But when you have a character called Sidney Barrett, named obviously after the late founder of Pink Floyd, you know that the creator is a fan of the band. When he met with composer Jeff Russo to talk about how he wanted the show to sound, he was quick to point out Pink Floyd's quintessential 1973 album, Dark Side of the Moon. In fact, the songs Breathe and On the Run were featured in episode 8 of season 1. The final episode of season 3 also includes a cover of Floyd's mother, a sequence which was beautifully done and heartwarming. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's not Dark Phoenix, but the end of shows like The Gifted and Legion that marks the true conclusion to the saga of Fox's X-Men. It is a bittersweet feeling, but while I am sad that it ended, I am also happy that they didn't do an arrow and drag it out till it became a cliched and boring soap opera. So as Legion would like us to believe,
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Click on the little bell icon if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Don't forget to share this with your friends. I'll see you guys in the next video.